ethanol. Did you know that in many countries it is used as a fuel and mixed with gasoline? But it is not only used to boost cars. We use it to clean things, as a solvent, as a reactant in some chemical processes, but perhaps most importantly, we drink it. At high concentrations, ethanol is actually toxic, but the intoxication process is quite fun. This provides ethanol with the social significance as a social lubricant, and people enjoy drinking it. I like drinking it too, but I think that there's other ways to have fun with ethanol. So today I'm obtaining 100% ethanol by distilling it from the cheapest liquor that I was able to find, just for fun. Maybe I will find a use for it in the future. And don't worry, I taste this liquor and I cannot think of a better use for these bottles. It tastes like trash. So I began with the fractional distillation of the liquor. According to the bottle, its concentration should be around 24% by volume. So my goal here was to distill it, removing as much water as possible. To achieve this, I employed a fractional column, which in my case is simply a glass tube with some spikes. I'll explain how it works later in the video. You might have noticed my preference for using ceramic aquarium media as boiling chips. I find they offer a good number of nucleation sites. Essentially, they provide a surface for the vapor to form, preventing the mixture from boiling violently. For this first distillation, I collected everything below 76 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of pure ethanol is approximately 78 degrees Celsius. However, I live in a place way above the sea level. So it makes sense for a mixture of ethanol and water to boil at that temperature. I repeated the process with the second bottle and distilled it just like the first one, collecting everything below 76 degrees Celsius. One piece of advice for anyone trying this is to properly support everything. I don't have enough stands, so sometimes this could feel like building a Jenga tower, except this tower is made of glass and contains a flammable hot liquid inside it. I would not describe this as a dangerous procedure though. Nevertheless, you need to pay attention to every detail and know what you're doing. Just take care and make sure to do it as safely as possible if you ever try it. After the distillation, I needed to measure the concentration of the ethanol, which can be tricky. However, we as humans seem to be obsessed with ethanol, and I think that I already established the reason why. So we figured out methods and devices to reliably determine the concentration of ethanol in aqueous solutions. What I am using here is an alcoholimeter, a device that actually measures the density. It's just a glass tube with some marks on it, and depending on the density of the solution, the tube will sink or float. And the density depends on the concentration of ethanol. Therefore, knowing the density, we can determine the concentration. I have three different alcohol meters, each for a specific range of ethanol concentration. One from zero to 40%, the other one from 40% to 70% and the one that I used the most during this video from 70 to 100%. In this case, the concentration was around 89%, so I was getting close to the final goal of pure ethanol. I did another fractional distillation to remove more water from the mixture, this time aiming to obtain the azeotrope. But before explaining what an azeotrope is, let's talk about fractional distillation and how it works. In normal distillation, or simple distillation, the aim is to evaporate one of the components of the mixture, to later condense and recover it. However, this can be challenging, as in most cases, both components evaporate at the same time, just at different rates. So the vapor phase contains more of one component, but is not 100% pure. This can be overcome by distilling the mixture again, thus increasing the concentration of the more volatile component. So imagine this, you distill a mixture, then take the distillate and distill it again, and in theory, you could repeat this distillation 
infinitely to achieve purity. However, reality is different, and in the real world, we are limited to a finite number of distillations. Nevertheless, that is enough for many mixtures, so you don't have to distill it infinitely. Several times are good enough. And that's exactly what a fractional column does. The fractional column is this glass tube with a bunch of spikes in it. And although not all fractional columns look the same, they all share the same principle. Inside the column, the mixture condenses when it touches the aforementioned spikes, because they are at a lower temperature. At the same time, the vapor tries to reach the top of the column and gets in contact with the condensated phase. This causes the condensed phase to boil again, just to condense again when it reaches the spikes further in the column. And the process repeats all over the column. This means that the mixture condenses and boils several times in its travel through the column. That is like doing several distillations. Therefore, a fractional column emulates the effect of several distillations, but does it in just one piece of equipment and at the same time. Because of that, the vapor that reaches the top of the column is more pure. Going back to my distillation, I collected a handful of milliliters before changing the recollection flask for a new one. This may be unnecessary, but I did it anyway. I was able to collect about 400 milliliters of azeotropic ethanol at a concentration of around 96%. But what is an azeotrope and why do water and ethanol form one? Well, an azeotrope is a mixture of two or more components that show the same concentration in both the liquid and the vapor phases. This means that they cannot be separated even by fractional distillation. Water and ethanol form an azeotrope at 96% by volume of ethanol due to the molecular interactions between them. The azeotrope actually boils at a lower temperature than pure ethanol. So, how am I obtaining pure ethanol? Well, there are several ways to break the azeotrope. We could try and distill the mixture under vacuum, add a solvent like toluene, or more easily, use molecular sieves that selectively trap water molecules, drying the ethanol. However, I decided to use something different, not only because I don't have molecular sieves or a vacuum pump or a solvent, but also because I wanted to explore an alternative way to dry ethanol without any special contraptions or equipment. I used plain and simple glycerin, a polyalcohol with a refractive index similar to glass and a sweet taste, and with several uses in cosmetics and pharmaceuticals. It is also readily available and cheap. I actually bought mine at the grocery store. Glycerin and water are really compatible and molecular interactions between these two molecules are actually stronger than those between water and ethanol. This prevents the azeotrope from forming, and pure ethanol can therefore be distilled by fractional distillation. For this to happen, we need to measure the amount of glycerin added. A ratio of 30% glycerin is advisable, but you're free to try with different amounts. Also, bear in mind, that as the distillation goes on, the ethanol water glycerin ratio may change and the azeotrope could reappear. In my case, I'm not sure if that's what happened, or if my fractional column was not long enough, or even if the water from the air affected the final result. But sadly, I was not able to obtain pure ethanol in my first run. However, I got 99% ethanol, which is great. This proved that the glycerin can indeed prevent the azeotrope from forming. However, we didn't came here to obtain 99% ethanol, did we? We want pure ethanol, and that's what I'm going to get. So I took my 99% ethanol and added more glycerin, again 30%, and distilled the mixture one more time. Hopefully the last one. In total, I had to perform five fractional distillations for this video, so I was getting sick of it. Anhydrous ethanol has a tendency to absorb water from everywhere, and that includes the atmosphere. So to avoid that, I made a desiccator tube with a syringe 
a couple of cotton balls and some calcium chloride from the hardware store. But in the end, it was worth it. I obtained it 100% ethanol. Two weeks of hard work, a couple of bottles of cheap liquor, some glycerin, a lot of pain and tears, but in the end I obtained pure ethanol. Now, a few things that I would like to mention. This process is not efficient. I lost a lot of ethanol with every distillation and the glycerin at the end cannot be recovered. I tried to remove the water from it with distillation, but at high temperatures it degrades and turns yellow. So bear in mind that the glycerin you use here will not be the same again. You could try and recover it with a vacuum distillation fork. Also, molecular sieves are a much better alternative, but if you don't have those, or if you need pure ethanol fast, this is a good way to do it. You can dry azeotropic ethanol with glycerin in just a couple of hours without distillation, whereas molecular sieves could take around 72 hours to do the same thing. So this is a good alternative. It's just not perfect. <laughs>